And Clay Wagner, son of James and Betty Wagner, uh, is in the hospital with pancreatic, uh, pancreatic itis, I believe that's the way you pronounce that, and a possible blockage. So uh, keep that family in, in, uh, in our prayers. Uh, Hewlin uh, has been moved to Edgewood Rehab in Byram in room 306. Uh, Casey Hurley uh, is supposed to have had surgery yesterday. Did you? Yep, he's back there raising the pan. He's giving a thumbs up. I think that was a thumbs up. Okay, he's good. <laughs> this is a, but uh, I can't see that far. It's, it's dark. Okay, uh, Jimmy Barr had neck surgery on last Thursday or last week. Uh, and I talked to him uh, yesterday, talked to Mary yesterday, and he's still very uncomfortable. So uh, it's going to be a long process to, for him to get back where he needs to be or where he wants to be. <clears throat> So let's, let's remember um, uh, the Oxley family and, and our prayers and, and, uh, as they're grieving the loss of uh, Buddy's mother. Uh, we're, we're collecting kid-friendly cereal, uh, cereal and uh, ramen noodles for Berean Children's Home. Uh, remember this, uh, this uh, Saturday at, uh, from 5 to 7, the Junior's Christmas Party uh, downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, women's Christmas Party is this coming Sunday at uh, the, the 12th from 3 to 5 in the downstairs fellowship hall, everyone is to bring finger foods and wrapped ornament for a gift exchange. <clears throat> and then our men's fellowship is uh, uh, next uh, Monday, the 13th at 6.30, and uh, bring your best Cajun dish. So this ought to be interesting. I, I, I want to I be there for that. I don't want to miss that. So, uh, so let's uh, also, too, <clears throat> um, put on your schedule, put on your calendar on December the 18th at 2 p.m., uh, we're going to be uh, handing out new members, uh, movers baskets, and so keep that in mind, too. Let's bow forward in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for another beautiful day that you provided with us, and we're thankful that we've had another opportunity to come into our classrooms throughout the building tonight and to uh, study a portion of your word so that we can be uh, better <clears throat> uh, uh, Christians in your life and so that we can live our lives better and so that we can have the benefit of being here. Father, we pray that you'd be with us as we enter into this song service, as we lift our voices in song, and also as we listen to the, uh, the word that would be uh, given to us in a way of devotion. Be with uh, Daryl as he gives us a devotion so that we can <clears throat> be uh, uh, in accordance to your will. Father, help us always to look to you for our strength and for our guidance, and remember all those who are on our sick list, and we pray that you'd give them some peace and comfort and and uh, help them to recover from those things that they are dealing with right now. Father, we thank you so much for your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The invitation song tonight will be 707, 707, if you want to mark that in a book. And before, we'll sing number 15, number 15, verses 1 and 3. To God be the glory, great.
Good evening, everyone. Glad to see everybody here this evening, be able to come together and study and praise God together. I'm going to be reading for 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Paul's writing here, and he says, Be imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. So we're, we're, we see here that we're to imitate Christ. And Jesus came and made an atonement for our sins. He, he brought God's word to us and made it known to us. And in doing this, his life is an example for us to follow today. I know that imitating our Lord is one of the greatest challenges we have in living a Christian life. Uh, following the example of Jesus, he gives us the perfect pattern of how to live a Christian life by doing the things that he has brought to us. And in a world of sin, I, what I want us to do is look at three things that Jesus manifested to us when he came and spent time here on earth. And we, the church, needs these three things. First of all, conviction. That is, being truly convinced and standing firm on God's word is the truth. Uh, Jesus was convicted to do the Father's will when he came. And we see this very plainly in John chapter 6, verse 38, that he says, I come to do my Father's will and not my will. We also see in Matthew 26, 39, that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed that it's the Father's will and not his will to be done. And we, the church, have a responsibility to uphold the, uphold the word. Uh, Jesus uh, demonstrated over and over all through his life here that believing that he believed and trusted and in the Father's will and we likewise should have that same uh, attribute with ourselves. I'm going to read 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. It says, But in case I am delayed, I write so that you will know how you ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. We the church is uh, is that pillar of support of truth. Uh, I know a pillar, they use pillars to put down for bridges and buildings to uphold the structures. And so we are to be that support of the truth. And we can do this by obeying, believing and obeying God's word and by uh, defending and proclaiming his word is the ways that we can do this. I sometimes wonder over the years, you see the brothers and sisters over past years of you kind of wonder sometimes how many are very are, are really convicted in what they believe. Um, I, I kind of wonder sometimes if, if some of the brethren really believe that there's a possibility that they could go to hell. I, I kind of wonder sometimes if they see the seriousness of sin and the necessity for worship, to come and worship with God uh, and with the brothers and sisters. The second point that Jesus manifested to us is courage. That is the act to voice one's convictions in word or deed. And we see that Jesus did that all through his life. Uh, he never shrieked or shrunk from uh, teaching the truth and, and telling other people about God's word or Father's will. Even with the persecution that he endured and, and being and to the point of being crucified on the cross. Uh, I would like for us to read John chapter 12, verse 42. You know, people can be convicted, but, but never really let the truth be known. Never tell what they're convicted of. Uh, chapter, John chapter 12, verse 42 says, Nevertheless, many of the rulers believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. And we see that with individuals today. Uh, belief in Jesus is not sufficient enough in itself if we're not willing to uh, confess him with our mouth and with our life. And it, and it takes courage to do so. It takes courage to, to stand up for what's right. It takes courage to stand against what's wrong. The third thing that I would like us to see and the final thing that Jesus manifested to us was compassion. And I know Gary alluded to this on Sunday that uh, we're to be follow Jesus as a pattern and as an example to to teach those who are lost and to evangelize. And we know that Jesus came and to seek and save the lost, as Luke chapter nineteen ten says. So Jesus, all through his life, demonstrated a compassion for man's physical and spiritual well being, and we likewise are to have the same. But you know, compassion. Uh, 
uh, shouldn't be com confused with tolerance. Now, I know in some sense we're to be patient in tolerance of being patient with others, but when it comes to sin, tolerance ha is, it has its limitations. And we see that with, with our Lord and Savior, that he, he, he always pointed out what sin was. And he, he, Luke 13, 3, he says, unless you repent, you likewise should perish. So we see that we're not to condone and that it does have limitations when we're dealing with sin. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 4 says that all men, uh, uh, God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And that's something that we likewise should have a desire for. Uh, the three examples, again, that, that we're to imitate our Lord is conviction. Uh, the Lord was convicted again to do the Father's will. Likewise, we should be convicted to do the Father's will. Uh, the courage to stand up in word and deed and, and to, to carry out the Father's will, as we likewise should do, as our Lord and Savior did. And, and again, to have compassion for our fellow man, and, and not only for his physical well-being, but the spiritual well-being of him also. Uh, if there's anyone here tonight that has not obeyed the gospel and you desire to do so, we're here and we would love to, to ha have you to obey the gospel and be part of the, the family of God by being baptized to have your sins washed away. Or if there, maybe there's someone here that just wants to ask for prayers for the brethren, for the church to pray with them and for them. We're here also and we invite you to come as we stand and sing. Jesus waiting, waiting in the cold. He Father in heaven, we thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we've had to come together and uh, learn more about you and study about your word and your will. And thank you for this church that meets here. Thank you for its leadership. Thank you for our preachers and deacons and all the rest of the members here. Please be with us as we try to do your will. Uh, please be with those who may be traveling this week. Please be with those who've lost loved ones, uh, those who are in the hospital, uh, especially uh, Mr. Conquest and uh, Mr. Um, Barnett, please be with them and as they go through treatments, and uh, please be with those who are uh, the, their families. Please be with the, the wedding this weekend, help everything go well with that. Thank you for being with us, please be with us and bring us back to the next point in time. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs>